Hey guys, welcome to another Diablo 4 video. In today's video, I wanted to talk about some of the things that will be important for you to keep in mind while leveling in Diablo 4. With the release only being a few days away, everyone is going to be excited and the race to 100 will begin. And with that in mind, there are some things that are important for you to keep thinking about while you're on your level up journey. These tips are just that, tips. Some of them you may ignore, others you may follow religiously. But what's important is that you know them, because some of them will aid you in very big ways as you head to 100. So, let's stop wasting time and just get into it. The first thing we will talk about is the leveling directly. There are many different ways to level up in Diablo 4, and of course you're free to do it your way. That's the nice thing about the game. But in the interest of speed, some are better than others. The first question you may ask when thinking about leveling in Diablo 4 if you're new is what is the max level? Well, the game has multiple levels of progression where you will interact with different systems. So what this means is, although the true max character level is 50, that won't be enough and isn't considered max level. After reaching 50, you will then begin your Paragon level system, which is an additional 50 levels for a total of 100. Then, the next question will naturally be, well, now that I know that, what's the fastest way to reach this level? Well, to get started on the right step, the first thing you should do when you create your character and enter the game is to be sure it is set to Veteran. This will greatly increase the amount of experience you receive for killing creatures and will make you fly through the early levels. Now, when you get started, your first objective should be to focus on the campaign. The main story is definitely your best first step on your journey to level up in Diablo 4. It is the most important experience source in the early game, and I recommend focusing on the campaign first. It not only provides you with a decent amount of early experience, but also rewards. Rewards in the form of gear and other useful items. And it has the secondary effect of showing you around the map so that you learn where everything is and you get all the waypoints. While doing this, you will encounter side missions. Side missions are also a great source of experience in Diablo 4. You will find these missions in all sorts of locations as you play through the story especially in the towns. It is always a good idea to grab and complete these with your main story quest as you go. This will save you backtracking and wasting your time. And they are massive hits of experience along the way. Another very important source of experience as well as gear as you journey your way to 50 is local events. Local events are arguably the best source of experience in Diablo 4's open world. You can recognize them by an orange circle on your map. When you enter the circle, you are automatically on it, and you simply contribute and when it ends you will receive a chest of materials and a big hit of experience. There are a few different types of these events you will encounter. For example, Obelisk of the Ancients. This event will have you stand on pressure plates and protect them as you're attacked by waves. The Besieged Caravan. This is where you will need to survive an ambush and protect the caravan people in the process. The Battle Altar, survive an attack and collect 30 enemy souls in the process. The Cursed Hatchery is to protect villagers from attacks. The Desecrated Ground, kill all channelers to stop the ritual and destroy the construct in the middle. Slaughter the Insatiable, this is where you will survive a ritual and prevent demons from getting the souls. The Wave of Darkness, this will have you defeat 5 waves of enemies in under a minute. The Stubborn Soul, this one will have you kill demons in an area and escort the Stubborn Soul. Eradicate Evil. This event will have you defeat all of the elite enemies with the timer still having one minute left. Assert Yourself. Here you'll have to defeat five enemy waves protecting the adventurer. The Liberation. In this one you'll have to free the prisoners and kill the elite while the timer has a minute left. Destroy the Pictures. Here you will destroy three structures and kill the elite while there are 60 seconds left on the timer. So as you can see, some will be faster than others, but all of them are worth doing. This is mainly because, along with the loot and the experience, they will also reward you with ovals. You can use this currency to purchase mysterious items from the Curiosity Trader. This is sort of like gambling in Diablo 4. Well, not sort of like gambling, it is gambling in Diablo 4, much the same way as you did with the blood in Diablo 3, which will speed up your leveling journey even further. There are many activities in the game that will grant you with experience and loot that will be important to how fast you level, but it's also important not to chase them. Instead, do them as you encounter them along your leveling journey, because if you get stuck chasing after things, you'll end up wasting more time than what you've really saved, so keep that in mind. So, just to summarize, these are the things you're going to want to keep in mind when it comes to leveling. Do every side quest that you come across while completing the main story. Kill every enemy monster within range of you as you're walking, but don't chase looking for more. Complete each dungeon you find while moving through the open world, but don't go hunting for them using the Diablo 4 map. Just do the ones required for the aspects or your side quests. Playing multiplayer gets you more experience. You get bonus experience if you're near other players. And if you're in a party, you get even more experience, so try to play with friends wherever possible. Or if you notice somebody that is leveling in the same area as you, why not ask them to invite? Always join the Orange Circle local events whenever you come across them. Always complete the strongholds. They are a great source of experience and those areas are full of monsters. Make sure to click all of the obelisks you find. You may get an experience bonus one and giving you even more experience for the things you kill for a limited time, or even the rich one that gives you gold whenever you hit something. 
If you conquered the Core Dragon Stronghold and the zone event is inactive, you can find a campfire there. Interacting with that fire gives you a stack buff of up to 15 times that helps you gain experience from enemies, so always try to have this on you whenever that's available. Avoid dying whenever you can, even on regular mode. This isn't important only to hardcore. You will lose time for waiting to revive as well as the health resetting on all the monsters, so just try not to do it. A really important thing is don't waste time. The map is enormous, so go straight forward and run directly to the places where you need to be. Don't mess around running here and there and end up accomplishing nothing and just wasting your time. Exploring is fun, but let's do that after we've leveled. Join other players when you meet them. Helping others grants additional experience, especially if you join a group. Killing higher level monsters and elites grants you much more experience than regular monsters, so whenever you see those, be sure to kill them. Another very important thing to not overlook while leveling is the elixirs and the healing potions. Visit the alchemists in the main towns to craft helpful elixirs that provide various benefit effects and a plus 5 experience for 30 minutes. This plus 5 experience really helps, trust me. More powerful elixirs that can't be crafted can also be found for completing various tasks and quests around the world. Make sure to visit the alchemist as soon as you reach the level required to upgrade your health potion. These levels are 20, 30, 45, 60, 70, 80, and 90. You always want to stay on top of your health potion upgrades. The final and most important thing while leveling to keep in mind is your gear. When deciding what gear to use in Diablo 4 as you level, it is important to understand the concept of item power. Item power, displayed beneath the item name and type, represents the strength of the gear and directly impacts how much it will benefit your character. So, basically what it means is higher item power generally indicates stronger gear, but it is also important to keep in mind the affixes and the effects that align with your character's build. In many cases, a lower item power item might be more powerful for you than a higher one if it has a specific stat that synergizes well with your skills and playstyle. So, when making gear decisions, be sure to keep an eye on both the item power but also the specific attributes and affixes that complement your build. So when it comes to choosing gear while leveling up, there are a few important things to be aware of. Here are some of the things that will help you make the most of your gear choices. First, pick up every item that you see that drops. This allows you to salvage them for resources or sell them for gold. Keep your bag and stash organized at all times. Keeping your inventory organized can greatly improve your efficiency, and it allows you to find things and see what you have quicker. Constantly check your bags for upgrades. Regularly examine loot and items for potential upgrades. Look for items that provide useful stats or bonuses, such as increased ranks to important skills or beneficial modifiers. Sell gear early game over salvaging it. When you first get started, it might be more beneficial to sell the gear you have for gold over salvaging it. This will be like the white items and stuff like that that drop early game. This will give you a shot of gold to get you started, because you won't really need these materials and the gold will be more important. However, always salvage the yellow gear. As you level and get better drops, you will quickly learn that salvaging yellow gear, and in most cases even the blue, will provide you with much more value than selling it for gold. Upgrade your jewelry and weapons constantly. These slots have the largest effect on your power and combat abilities, with weapons offering 100% to legendary powers and amulets 50. However, be much more picky with armors. As a secondary, lower priority, you will want to upgrade your armors. But do not go out of your way to do this. Only do it if you have enough materials left over after you have done your jewelry and your weapons. Now, as always, visit the Occultist. Here you will be able to imbue your gear with legendary aspects, making them legendary and much more powerful. There are two ways to do this and understanding the difference is very important as you level. First, you can unlock many aspects by completing dungeons throughout the game and adding powers to your codex. This is, of course, a permanent collection that can be used by the occultist over and over to imbue new gear. Second, you can also extract unique and more powerful aspects from legendaries you have acquired. This will destroy the item and place the aspect in a holding vessel till you use it. The reason this is an important distinction is because while leveling you will be changing weapons and gear quite often. So it's a good idea to avoid using good extracted powers on temporary gear. Instead, stick to the codec aspects. Well guys, that just about covers the basics. There are a million other tips I could give, but I don't want this to go on forever. So if you guys feel like there's something that I didn't include in this video that's very important for a new player to know when they're starting leveling, please feel free to leave it in the comments. And as always guys, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.